Hey YouTube, here's Heiko. I almost uh, worked on a little project without involving you. Um, my 1974 R90-6 has a little bit of a noisy valve train. Um, you know, one side is really quiet, the other side is a little louder. And uh, there's probably not too big of a problem with that. Um, but I just don't like it and therefore I uh, first try to adjust everything like perfectly uh, adjust uh, the valve clearance on both sides intake and exhaust uh, to spec um, then the uh, I want to say the axial or the uh, longitudinal play of the rockers in those uh, uh, blocks here um, can be adjusted as well to very minimal play so you, you can see a little bit of some oil squeezing out when you move it up and down and that is about right because you don't want to clamp it down so that they kind of seize up in their location you still want them to move freely but you don't want to have any uh, noisy play in here so how some people do it, they loosen up the top nut, put uh, two sockets over the rocker shaft, and then clamp it down with like a woodworking one of those here. So there are the two sockets that I use. They fit right over over the rocker shaft. Put one top one at the bottom. You only really need to loosen one nut, and then you squeeze it a little bit with this uh, pistol grip clamp kind of mechanism, and then. Um, while you do that, you kind of still play with it. You still want to see a little bit of some oil squeezing out. Let's see if it focuses. So you can see that the oil film is moving a little bit. So that's just fine. And then you torque it down again. And then it should be really quiet. Um, yeah, in this case, this one rocker, this is for the exhaust valve, had a little bit of some radial play so not axial this way but radial or so this is longitudinal that would be a lateral play so there was a little bit of some tipping going on and i'm assuming that that is the cause for this side being noisier than the other side so and then um it's kind of a risk to take this loose like this so uh, you have six cylinder head bolts and four of those are holding the rockers on. So these are still torqued. These two here in, in the background, down there and up here, they're still torqued. But I had to take those two loose to be able to take the rocker off. It's a risk. Um, your cylinder head gasket could come loose, but I'm just taking that risk. I took the rocker, those uh, the blocks that clamp this all together, the nuts and all that, took that off. Then I measured the rocker shaft. If there's any measurable wear, um, you can see there's a little bit of some, yeah, some staining from oil and then uh, some polished areas where the rocker is, uh, the, the needle bearings inside the rocker are running, but there's absolutely no measurable wear on this shaft. So the shaft is fine. So that means that the, the, the radial or this tipping motion um, is because of the needle bearings inside the rocker itself that they are worn. I'll show you. I'll try, yeah, I'll pause and then uh, take my rocker that I have already started pushing the bearings out, take it out and just show you what, what's going on here. So hold a second. So here we go. This is one of the rocker needle bearings needle bearings open they have no inner race so the inner race is pretty much the rocker shaft uh, there are two in one of those rockers here um, how i just push those out so there's no steps or anything in here so i just used a a deep socket that fits right inside the rocker and is about the same outside diameter as the bearing just ever so slightly smaller so uh, look at this so this goes right in here with no friction and uh, yeah, I just started 
pushing the first one against the second one and then I push them together into this deep socket here and did that all with my vise have some aluminum uh, jaws on here so I'm not messing up my sockets either and uh, now I'm going to push the second one out and then it's really easy to I have uh, so these these are kind of nice because let's see it actually says Germany on it and what's the other word that's down there uh, Dorkopf Dorkop. That's, that's probably the manufacturer there's also a part number on there I will later see if I can find actually um, this part maybe just off of a hardware supply webpage in the meantime I will install the ones that I found online they were $12 a piece um, if I would have ordered those from BMW I would have spent 30 bucks almost 30 bucks per bearing um, they look exactly the same except there is no Germany on it so here's a needle bearing brand new in some protective oil oiled paper and they put a little foam piece in the middle so the needles don't come out I will press those in this is really simple really I mean you have some aluminum jaws on your vise and then you first push one in from one side push the other one in from the other side and then maybe use a socket to just recess them a little bit here let's see so you want it recessed ever so slightly maybe a little less than this you know so that uh, the the cage of the bearing doesn't rub against the the blocks that hold the whole rocker assembly on so you don't want the outside of the race or the 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 cage here to rub on anything um, but here let me put you in a camera stand tripod and then I will do the rest and show you how that goes it's, it's really simple all right guys hold on a second I think I really need to find myself a taller tripod anyway so I have one bearing out now I'm just gonna line this up again nice aluminum jaws and line it all up and then just push this is how easy this goes and there it comes and the second bearing is out here's the second one also germany Durkop. so now i'm just going to inspect so this this literally just falls right through it's the perfect length for this job uh, now I have two old bearings. I'm going to hold on to those because the cages are not damaged or anything. And in a pinch, if for whatever reason I lose a needle out of one of the other bearings or something happens, the inside is really smooth. There is no, there was no bearing loose or anything. So this is flawless. I don't need to worry about it. And now we're just going to grab one of the new ones. And I will leave this foam piece in there that kind of keeps the they look really a little chintzy they are probably made in china and uh, the old bearings actually have one side with writing on it that's really flat and the other side is a little rounded and you would put the rounded side to the inside of the rocker so written uh, or, or the surface with the writing on it is outside and outside um, here in this case both ends kind of look the same diameter is the same so I'll just pick one I'll leave the foam in there just so I don't drop any needles out of it and then there is a little slight chamfer here on the edge so that makes it a little easier and in this case I'm just going to put the rocker against one of the jaws and then the bearing will be against the other side and line up perfectly my jaws are relatively parallel I hope at least and then uh, do that right in the middle of of your vise so you have it all nicely lined up in a straight line and then just try to oh yeah it's already moving in so we're not gonna mess around uh, take it loose one more time and push it in 
make sure you're not bending anything. So now, now it's flush with the surface, like so. It's flush and I want it to be recessed ever so slightly. So I'm gonna use my, what is it? A 14 millimeter, three eighths drive socket that fits inside the rocker arm but is still roughly the diameter of the bearing and just recess it ever so slightly. So let's see. There you go. Let's see. You know, I just don't want the, the uh, cage of this bearing to rub against the, the block that holds this rocker in place. That's the whole idea behind it. Maybe I push it in a little more. Just maybe I even measure it. Or maybe I just wing it. So there's just a little bit of a recess now. That's all there is. I hope you guys can see this here. Yeah. All right. And now I'm going to turn this around. Grab the next clean out of packaging bearing. Again, decide which side I want to put inside and which side I want to put outside. I'll choose this one. Again, I leave the little foam in there so the needles don't accidentally fall out, like so. And squeeze. Take it loose one more time so it can all fall in place and line up. And then um, you've got to make sure that you hold it so that nothing gets in the way here. And... We are flush. Stick that on there. And squeeze it in a little more. And then I'm probably going to uh, compare. So let's see. Like so. There's a nice little recess. Good. Good. You don't want to push it in too far. So the, the, the more distance you have between those two bearings, the more stable they are against this tipping motion. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a little edge here and a little edge here. And it's really not rocket side, so it doesn't really make huge difference. If you know, This is probably a little further in than this here. But I'm not going to push that out. I'm not going to worry about it. This is just fine. Now I'm going to pause you. So now we're back at the motorcycle. I have the rocker here in my, my hand. The push rod is still in here. Feels good. It's seated all the way. Make sure there's no gunk or anything here on your threads because uh, we want that to go on pretty nicely. Take a look at your spring, make sure there's no cracks, no nothing. The, the little retainer that holds the spring seat in place is there. I like to just try to twist the spring a little bit. So that looks good. I don't want to keep this loose um, any longer than I have to because I really won't, don't want my gaskets to come loose and my, my cylinder base gasket to start leaking oil. So that's why I was kind of in a hurry a little bit, but I wanted to share this with you. Um, so this is fine. I'm not gonna mess with the greased, nicely greased. There's a little bit of some, looks like petroleum jelly on there. Um, they came out of nice oil paper. I'm gonna uh, take some compressed air and blow through the inside of this rocker shaft because this, this opening here, is how the rocker actually gets its oiling. Um, so I will just blow through this real quick. Be right back. Okay. Probably gonna make a huge mess because there's most likely oil inside, but I don't want any gunk sludge to stay in there. Perfect. Uh, just some engine oil came out. The passages are all open. Um, 
on this older one here, the 7490-6, uh, this type of shaft has uh, kind of a plug that's pinned into it. That is the top. And then I don't think there is an inside or an outside. I've stared at, uh, at, at the rocker shaft. Uh, so you can't really take them upside down because then you would starve your rocker of some oiling. So you want to definitely make sure the drilled opening with a plug in it is to the top. Now I'm going to use the rocker shaft and push out those two foam pieces. It should be coming out. Yeah, here we go. Now there is some something on it, some petroleum jelly. Feels really nice. Let's see if we... Uh, still a little bit of some tipping play, but... Other than buying a new rocker shaft, oh, by the way, I put it in upside down. So let's turn this around without breaking the needles loose. And then behind you, sorry, right in the way, there are the blocks. They have an inside and an outside. Um, here's a little uh, step machined into this block. That's the outside. And um, here in my case, I actually have turned the blocks around so this one used to be the bottom one you can see the um, the worn surface from from the motion of the rocker you can see that here and the other side is clean of any any marring or uh, surface damage so now I put this one at the top so I have a clean fresh surface and uh, did the same thing so this one here no this way used to be the top one like that and now it's going to be the bottom one um, and uh, now we just need to line it all up I'm not so worried about having a proper valve adjustment here at this point I really just want this back on there so I can torque all the cylinder head bolts one more time so I'm not getting a oil leakage back there the nuts that go on here they don't use any washer you see the machine step here that's where the nut goes onto and the nut actually has a step uh, also machined into it and that machine step goes to the step here in those blocks kind of like so and like so and then um, I like to push it together with my fingers like so making sure that I take up as much slag in here as possible of course now i took all my 14 millimeter sockets over there now i don't have one here that sucks so i'll run over to my vice and get the 14 millimeter socket so now I will just snug up the, the bottom one first a little bit just so that there's some tension on it and then the top one is the one that we want to lo leave loose so we can do the clamping wiggle test you know what actually I do have my um, torque wrench here it's set to 35 newton meters some people say 40 but my manual says 35 so I'm going to do what my manual says the order is one two three four five six so one two I'm just gonna do that 35 newton meters uh, no, yeah 35 newton meters click and then I probably won't torque it down just yet click and then you would want to do this one but we still have to do our play adjustment for this direction here you can hear that how much play there is so I'm going to use my 15 and my 16 millimeter socket they fit over the rocker shaft get my little clamp here in place like so Clamp it down. Still lots of play. Clamp it more. And um, 
There is no, nothing uh, discernible. There's nothing loose, really. This one is already tight enough that this will not move. Um, I will torque him now in this condition. Um, we have a valve play because I put this cylinder on uh, top dead center. So both valves are loose. Um, I will torque him now in the proper orientation here. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, then take the clamp off and check again. Uh, right now there is not much oil on here, but I can, I have a little oil can over there. I'll, I'll oil those up um, and see if I can squeeze some oil. If that's not the case, what I sometimes do, I'm always focusing at the top. I just use a brass punch that will not damage the nut and just give it a little tap that sometimes gives me the play that I need. You can even do that with a brass punch when all nuts are torqued properly. You just, if it's too loose, you just give it a little whack with a brass punch, or if it's too tight, give it a little whack the other direction, and that will just give you ever so slightly of some play. So in this condition, so 35, click, 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 and I do it again. Because the, the two that I just had completely loose, they might settle a little bit. So you, you want to make sure that they had a little bit of some time. All right, now I take my clamp off with my two nuts, not, not sockets. Take this off, make sure we don't have any grime, gunk, dirt. That feels pretty good. And now I'll get some oil. So what I have in, in this little oil can from Harbor Freight is uh, Marvel's Mystery Oil. It doesn't hurt anything. Now I'm just going to put a drop on each end. So I So now even though I had the clamp on there, you can hear how much play there is, and I don't, don't like that. So I'm going to get my little, give it a little whack. Better better and looking for the little bit of some since we're, we need to do a full valve adjustment anyways after a procedure like this what I like to do is to take the adjuster loose so taking the adjuster loose all the way undoing it as far as I can so that I have as much valve play as I can. Because when I do the, the part with my little brass punch to tighten up the clearing here, uh, clearance a little bit, I want to make sure that we're, see, they, they are kind of sticking now a little bit. I don't want that either. So it needs to be, uh, Some more. 
marbles down the little gap here. It needs to be loose enough so it has no stiction. And at the same time, it has to have enough play so you are squeezing oil in and out of this little gap down here. And uh, I think we are pretty good on that side. So yeah, the brass punch method, uh, you can be pretty uh, gentle with that. Give it a little gentle love tabs. Oh yeah, I can see oil squeezing and I have free movement and I can't make any noise with it. That's good too. Good, good. And now we're probably gonna do valve adjustment right away. Since I hammer around on this, I usually go over it one more time in case anyone, anything decided to settle here. Oh, this one. I got a little bit of some movement out of it. Nope. And that. And then I check one more time. Clear. And play again. Yeah, so it's not always perfect. It's not perfect right away. Gotta work on it slowly. Still. A little stiff now. A little stiff. But there's still oil squeezing in and out. I think that's fine. Okay. Every time I retort this nut, it uh, it goes back to having some yeah some play there. It's not much though. You know what? Make an exception and use the bottom one. Still. Oh, perfect. Oh, this is just perfect. Loose, but now upside down play. And and it didn't it didn't do anything. This is perfect. So we're not going to play with this anymore. And now I'm just going to do a valve adjustment. Um, set it to. 0.2 millimeters like that I want it to slide with some friction I want it too tight don't want it too loose and now the trick is to get the nut at the at the back of the adjuster tighten up without changing the valve clearance 
and that is the tricky part. What I sometimes do is just run the nut against it and then do the adjustment. So I want some friction, but not too much. Mm -hmm. I'm tighten it more, check again, tighten more, check again, and then click and <laughs> I got loose. Ah, yeah. Every time I tighten up this nut, it becomes loose again. So this is kind of frustrating. Good. There you go. That's perfect. Okay, schnuck. And then some people say 0.15 of a millimeter on the intake side. Some people say 0.1 millimeter. Um, I follow my my newest repair manual that says yes we know that some of the owner manuals from 1970 something says to use 0.15 but after years and years of experimenting with it we recommend 0.1 and that's what I'm doing this is 0.1 it's perfect I don't need to adjust this one you can also push against here to make sure that you're taking up any kind of slack so now it's a little loose do that here. You're taking up the slack uh, between the cam follower and the adjuster here. You're, you're pushing against your push rod. So now they are both a little loose. So that means I will tighten them up ever so slightly on both ends here. Let's do this one. Correct. Oh, that's tightening. Let's go. Whoa. An expert in front of the camera. Righty tidy, lefty loosey, right? Oh my goodness. Alright, there you go. So let's see. That's a little tidy tidy. That's perfect. Push. It's a little tight. A little tight. That's good. Good friction. Almost good. So on, on this side, every time you tighten it, you make it tighter. On this side, every time you tighten it, it should be the same. I was coming up with a piece of wisdom here, which is completely nonsense. So disregard. Now it's to loose again, of course. Ah, this is good. Okay, now I just need to make sure I have it tight enough. Now this is good. And this one is good too.
good. Okay, that's it. Torqued all around, adjusted, and this just gets tightened by, you know, my, by feel. They have a torque setting for that as well. And I'm gonna slap the cover back on and then do a test run. And I hope um, some of the noisiness on this side uh, has gone away. I have another. This one here seems so nice that I don't wanna don't wanna replace them yet. So I'm gonna save the the other twenty four dollars worth of bearings for another day all right guys that's it and i don't think that my head gasket took any damage from it or my base gasket we shall see but it's all torqued to spec now and there shouldn't be any oiliness anything going on um it happens but you know what can you do i can't always replace everything just because i need to change a bearing in the rocker so we'll see if my retorking did it. Make sure we don't have any oiliness to uh, speak of, and then drive it and see. Or oh, ride it, sorry. Riding, not driving. All right, you guys take care. Have a good one. Bye. Here's a quick after the fact. I, I know I didn't give you the before. But this is pretty quiet. This is the other side. Pretty quiet. Um, don't forget to change, uh, not to change, to check your oil level, engine oil level, after you do stuff like this. Because every time you take that cover off, you will have a little bit of oil come out. Um, so every time you do a valve adjustment, just make sure you are not bringing your oil level down too far. And uh, don't idle your airheads too long, standing still. You know, a few seconds doesn't matter, but uh, you definitely don't want to do that minutes. Like uh, a lot of people with their Japanese bikes, they start them up and let them warm up, that kind of deal. I don't do that at all. I start them up, full choke, roll out of my parking, yeah, out of my driveway, and then a few hundred yards down the street, I'm already taking it down to the first detent on my choke here and uh, warm it up while driving. You know, a little bit increased RPM will increase the oil pressure, which is better on, you know, all the bits and pieces because the oil gets pushed where it needs to go. If you let it idle at, at the very low end down here, like at a thousand RPM, you barely have enough oil pressure um so yeah just remember that don't let those idle you will overheat this engine and check your oil level all the time and constantly and if you want to park your airhead for a long 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 while don't put him on the kickstand just put him on the center stand that's what that is for uh yeah that's just what i think my personal opinion so don't hold them against me take care bye